We set the machine to about 120 amps, maybe 130. I've got a foot pedal. Frequency 100 looks good, and 75 for balance. I'll start here and see how it goes. I'm using 5356, just because, frankly, it's what I grabbed. All right, so maybe not the prettiest looking gas tank in the world, but it's what's on the inside that counts. Top has a threaded port for the cap, of course. It's an oil cap, but it's vented, so it should do the trick. I've got another large threaded port in the side, and that's to be able to get the fuel filter in there. I'll close that off. This is just a plug with just a small piece of tubing welded through it. And then finally a spot for the fuel return from the carburetor. I'm going to go ahead and install this and then I'll try to explain why it ended up being such a silly shape. All told, I think it could have come out worse. The problem with the tank was I started off with a limited amount of material. Like that piece of diamond plate that I think you saw me start to mark up and bend was the last piece that I had. I knew I wanted to make a low spot on one side of the tank just so the fuel filter was always at the lowest point. And I think I got a little overzealous there. I planned to bend it up. Once it was bent and I had the low spot, I wanted to cut it all off square. And then I realized the material was small and my tank would have gotten really tiny. So long story short, funny gas tank. But the cart is basically finished. I mean, I've got maybe a guard to do in the back, a couple of little odds and ends, but for now, I think me and Evil Knievel are going to go out and give it a try. What you're watching here is actually our second outing. Our first test drive was a little short-lived. I mean, it was probably 40 minutes. I couldn't get them off of the cart, but I had to cut it short. I noticed my crooked front tire needed to be sorted out. It didn't look that bad on the bench. And I noticed the engine wouldn't always drop down to idle speed, or wouldn't drop quickly. So I added an additional return spring to the carburetor. I suppose there is a lot of cable for that little carburetor to take up. Then it was back to the races. Now I apologize for this footage. Filming a fast moving target was harder than I thought. And to be honest, most of my brain power was focused on getting Speed Racer here home in one piece. Here it's going about 75% full throttle. He wanted to go faster, but you know, baby steps. 50% throttle I learned the last time was just too slow. So all in all, Except for the tires, I think I'm really happy with how this thing's working out. I mean, it seems to respond well, you know, for a five-year-old. The steering seems pretty light. Turning radius is good. The thing stops when he hits the brakes. It goes when he hits the go. But at the rate these tires are wearing, I'm sure they're going to be completely bald before I even get to publish this video. So this is what about two hours of driving looks like. And I don't know if you can make that out, but the rear tires are about the same. Maybe a smidge more wear, but I'd be splitting hairs. And it seems to be a little more even on the rear tires. The front tires, it's wearing a smidge on the outsides. But, you know, bubblegum tires. I may have another look around for official go-kart wheels, but last time I looked, I remember them being pretty darn expensive. Like 50, 60 bucks a tire, plus another 60, 70 bucks for the hubs, and then who knows what else I would need to get them on there. But for now, I think I'm just going to let my kid run these and have a blast until there's nothing left but the inner tubes. 
So my boy made it clear that if nothing else, the cart needed to have two things, the steering wheel and a key. So here I'm working in a little key switch for the engine kill switch. Give him something to play with. I may wire a second kill switch somewhere on the top at the back. Something with easier access for me. With that, I believe all of the key components are installed. <clears throat> And after a few days in intensive care, recovering from that joke, I broke the cart back down, flipped it over, and welded out the underside. So while that stuff is drying, I've made a couple of small parts for the floorboards. Essentially a heel stop, go about there. Then a small shield or sidewall. This is right where the springs and the cables are, just to keep shoelaces and stuff from getting in there. So, what do you think? Yes, as a matter of fact, I do have a lot of yellow paint. Now, it still needs protection on the rack and pinion, and a guard on the chain. But for the purposes of this video, there you have it. You might notice the steering column is a little shallower than it was in the last video. Once I had the steering wheel and both my kids sitting in it, I brought it in a little bit. I've also gotten the impression that the size of this thing might not be coming across well in these videos. Looks bigger on screen, perhaps. In reality, it's not much bigger than a silver dollar. Let's put it this way, if I tried to ride this thing, I'd need the jaws of life to get me back out of it. I haven't weighed it, but it's maybe, I don't know, 80 pounds, about 40 kilograms. It's a little awkward to hold onto, but I can pick it up and load it into the back of my Jeep by myself, and I'm not particularly strong. So the cart is a little big for my boy, and a little crowded for my girl. Not too hot, not too cold, but not just right either. I may add flip down pedal extensions for my son, but the bigger issue is how snug the seat is for my girl. Most of the head scratching that went into this build was due to trying to build one cart for two different sized kids and keep it safe. But this thing probably has at least one or two good years before it needs any changes, notwithstanding any sudden growth spurts. Nevertheless, with just the two rides they've taken, they're both having an absolute blast in it. No offense to anyone else, of course. These are just the only stickers I happen to own.